All right, James and Tracy, thank you for that. Of course, arts education is extremely important, so we applaud the Dallas Opera for expanding their programs. But what is an opera without opera stars? So I am here now with two of them. This is Ava Pine. To my right, tenor Sean Matthew here. To my left, and they play star-crossed lovers, Pamina and Tamino. And there's always somebody coming between them. And tonight, I guess it's me, at least, <laughs> at, at least for the moment. Um, you were a young uh, artist in residence here with the opera, right? Playing right. Romeo and Juliet, um, playing in Romeo and Juliet at the student matinee. What was that experience like? Well, that was fabulous. I got to perform opera for thousands of students who had never seen an opera before. So in many ways, it's kind of like the crowd at Cowboys Stadium tonight. The energy was fabulous. So hey, you guys send some our way tonight. <laughs> did, did, you, did you feel like when it was over, and a lot of students probably came up to you, did you feel like there was some conversion going on there that you were convincing some young people that, boy, maybe there's a pathway for me here? Yeah, they loved the it. Arts? It was Romeo and Juliet, and as with these star-crossed lovers, they can relate to not always getting your way when it comes to affairs of the heart. Things turn out, though, we have to say, we don't want to give too much of it away, but things turn out a little better here uh, for, for you two than for Romeo and Juliet. So give us some part of the storyline if you can. Well, it's ultimately a journey for each of us, for Pamina and Tamino. Um, and ultimately it's about a matter of being patient and being able to remain silent so that we can become qualified, as it were, to finally be united with each other because apparently they have bigger things in mind for us in the future. So, and it's a fun journey musically because the, the music uh, is, is genius in that it matches that, mm -hmm. that psychological journey of the character so perfectly. Now, I, I, just to, um, I know you're a bit modest, but you have been acknowledged as one of the best Mozartian tenors in the entire world. So how does it feel to, to sort of hold that place and is it a lot of pressure? I, I think it's at the same time it's two things. It's a lot of pressure um, and I, I want uh, everyone to know that I'm not the one that that planted that designation <laughs> anywhere. Uh, but also I think it takes some pressure off because it gives you an ability to say, okay, the way I've been expressing as I've built my career mm -hmm. must satisfy a certain number of people or, or opera houses. So with that in mind, you feel like you can kind of keep going, that you can trust your instincts and that it's going to, it's going to satisfy uh, the masses and, and the people at the house. Yeah, and Ava, of course, is not without her accolades as well. I know you've done a lot with Baroque and classical repertoire both on, both on stage and uh, in opera. So what does this performance, this music, this, this particular opera do for you? Well, for me, it's just the utter perfection of Mozart. His music just makes sense. It's so beautiful and it speaks to your heart and your mind. And it's just, and he knows how to entertain at the same time too. Ava, thank you very much. And congratulations to both of you, Sean. Thank you as well.